Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Matthew from Impact Innovation Group, and we're working with the Queensland Government to deliver a series of webinars on behalf of the Office of Small Business. Today's webinar topic is how to get your business flying in the cloud with our guest presenter, Troy Schoenfish from Troy's Bookkeeping. Just while we're waiting for other people to connect into the webinar, I'll go through some of the tools we'll be using for those people who haven't viewed a webinar before or have not used a webinar using the Citrix GoToWebinar systems. Your screen should look like this, a slide in the center and a control panel or dashboard on your right. This control panel will collapse automatically and when you're not using it. So to keep it open, just click the view menu up at the top and uncheck auto hide control panel. During the webinar, we may ask you questions to better understand your experience with the topic. To respond to these questions, we will ask you to raise your hand. To do that, just click on the little blue hand icon on the side of the control panel. Remember to lower your hand afterwards just by clicking on the same button again. We also encourage everyone to please ask the questions about any of the content featured here today. Just so that the webinar can flow smoothly and we stick to the time allocated, we prefer to answer the questions at the end. However, please feel free to type them in as you occur to you. Just so we can check if this function is working, can everyone please press the blue button just to raise their hand? Wonderful. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Tracy. That's so great. Thank you so much. We have also uh, have some handouts for you today, which you can access and download by clicking on this section. Troy has kindly agreed to share his slide deck with us, and they have been specifically prepared to help you better understand today's webinar. These will, they will not be available to download after the completion of the webinar, so I will remind you again after the presentation. So now it's time to bring on today's presenter. Troy's whole approach to working with business owners is to put control back in, uh, into the small business owner's hands. Troy's specialities include startups, cloud software, apps and efficiency, and bookkeeping. With a decade of training and working in account accounting firms, Troy brings a refreshing approach providing business owners with the support, guidance, and assistance to help them achieve their goals in small business and in, uh, in all facets of business. As well as integrating the right software and processes, Troy's passion is book work and making this as easy and efficient as possible for startups and small businesses. He has worked with multi-million dollar turnover businesses, but it is making bookkeeping accessible and affordable is how Troy makes the biggest impact. So Troy, welcome to the webinar. Hi, John. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, John, for inviting me to speak to everyone today. Uh, I'll just go through a brief run through of what we're going to talk about. So, I, if I can just, using the, the hands up function, if I could just uh, ask everyone if you're already using cloud accounting software, so where's that, or some sort of automated computerized accounting software, if you can just raise your hand. Uh, so that we know, you know who's on and who's doing what and who's already where they're at in their business. And then uh, John can let me know where that's at. Um, I'm just going to talk about some of the benefits, some of the drawbacks and the ways that using cloud software and what that means can actually be of a benefit to people. Um, so I'm just going to start out with a little bit of background from of, of me. So I started out actually um, working for Macquarie Bank um, not long after I left school. Uh, so I've always had a background in finance before I went into accounting. Uh, that was pretty much at the high end of finance. So you know, individual transfers of businesses of $100,000 or more. So pretty high end. Then I became a youth worker for a while. Uh, and that was really to engage my passion around you know, giving people a hand up, you know, not a hand out, working for the Salvation Army, uh, and really in the not-for-profit community services space. I've spent the last 10 years in what people would call a traditional accounting firm. 
So businesses go in pretty much once a year, take in all the, the book work and everything that they've done for the entire year, hand it to the accountant and in three to four weeks they get back how much tax they owe and a pretty decent bill to go with it. I was introduced into the very first foray for Australian cloud accounting which was BankLink back in 2008 which was the first time that software could be used to pull all the transactions of a bank statement into software to remove the need to key all of the data in. I picked up on that really early as something that's going to really provide a lot of efficiencies and a lot of ease of use for making sure that the finances of a business are taken care of as quickly and as simply as possible because fundamentally a business succeeds off its profitability and we need to be able to know how to keep a track of that in the simplest way possible so that you can concentrate on doing what you do well instead of spending a lot of time doing the book work. Uh, so over the, the last you know, decade of seeing the introduction of you know, Mile moving to the cloud or Zero being introduced and its expanse uh, and then you know, QuickBooks and a number of others coming along as well. So I left full-time employment at an accounting firm as a senior accountant in uh, September of last year and set up my first business of my own. Uh, I was a bookkeeping business. I'm a registered BAS agent with the Tax Practitioners Board and I focus on working with people who are making the move from employment into starting their own business as well. Uh, I also work with not-for-profit organisations, so I've actually paid and set up seven not-for-profit organisations for collaboratively with other people since the start of the year. I spend a lot of time working with startups, so that's what we refer to people who are just starting out. So whether that's not yet earning any income or whether it's the first 12 to 18 months being in business because that's when you really got to get the systems in place to help grow. A lot of times people in that space will say to me, oh look, I'm not earning enough money yet or I'm not earning any money yet to afford to pay for, for software or I'm not really earning enough to be worried about keeping track of things. And I always say to people, well, you want to keep track of things from the start of all of your expenses even before you're earning any money and you want to make sure that your system is going to be something that you can refer back to in 12 months or 18 months rather than having to redo all that work. Cloud accounting software really gives you the ability to do that because you, you can literally link your, link your bank account to the software straight away and even if you don't do anything else with it, it's at least capturing the information of everything that goes through your bank account. And as anybody will tell you, it's all about data, data, data. You want to capture that information and then it's about what you do with that information, how you analyse it and making those decisions. So I spend a lot of time doing training, doing workshops, doing webinars, doing um, going to startup weekends, going to hackathons, there's all these term and terms that, that we use, which is basically me getting out there and connecting with small businesses. And the best way to capture all that financial information is definitely cloud accounting. So what cloud accounting means, effectively, on a very, very simple basis, is just that there's a lot of buildings in Sydney and Melbourne that have a lot of computer servers in them and that is the cloud. So all of the data, all of the mild files, zero files, QuickBook files, all the accounting software, the cloud, they're actually stored down in Melbourne and Sydney in office towers. And they're backed up backwards and forwards in three different locations so that we've always got access to it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's the basis of what the cloud is. For people who are already using cloud accounting software uh, that are already on board with it, there's still some hesitations, uh, but people who aren't there yet, these are usually 
the, the top of the, the top five questions I get asked, or the top five hesitations that people have from moving from a desktop software into what's known as a cloud accounting software. Like I said, I'm not earning enough money yet to worry about software. We've spoken about that. I've had the same system in place for the last 10 years. I know how to use it. I paid for my desktop version 16 eight years ago. It cost me 140 bucks. Why do I need to spend any more money? That's a big one. Uh, it would cost too much financially or take too much time to move from what I have into a new system. Security is a big issue. So like I said about the cloud being banks and banks of servers in Sydney and Melbourne, the because government departments actually use cloud accounting software these days, the encryption and security levels that are required for those software companies to comply with are actually at a level higher than government requirements because they've got to be at that level for the government to be able to use them. So if the government's able to use them and they're secured, then from encryption and bank encryption and security basis, it's actually very, very, very secure. So, and I always say to people, if you use a banking app on your phone or on a device, then using cloud accounting software is actually more secure than doing that a time because of the level of security that they have to have in place. The other thing is with, there are some free ones around like Wave apps and things like that, but those ones are stored overseas. So from Australian privacy laws, especially regarding financial data, we have it, all the information has to be stored here in Australia, which is why the cloud accounting software options, zero mile QuickBooks, that are based here in Australia, are stored here in Australia, and are completely compliant with those regulations. The next place is that they don't know where to start, um, and usually when people don't know where to start, they go to Google, uh, and Google is cheaper than talking to an accountant or a bookkeeper, but there's certain limitations to the information you can get on Google, uh, and like anything else, like they say about cancer, um, when, when you do Dr. Google, you stub your toe, you can end up with cancer if you spend long enough looking for it on Google. So uh, knowing where to start is a big one, and the best place to go is either your accountant or a bookkeeper. Process and simplify it a whole lot for you. So, you know, people go, oh, I just, I don't like change, I'm good, I'm comfortable with where I'm at. Look, to be honest, this is sort of an indica indication of progress. You know, we don't run our book work based off using an abacus anymore. You know, computers aren't the size of an entire room anymore. And we have the flexibility and the capability of doing everything that we need to wherever we are and we ever, wherever we have internet access. So in order for a business to grow and improve and become efficient, we use technology because it grows and it develops to help us run our businesses better. And uh, we can get rid of all this paperwork because um, I used to work in offices that look like this and anybody who has worked in an office that looks like this or anybody who is a little bit of OCD and walks into an office that looks like this goes, oh, we have to be able to find a better way to do it. And cloud accounting is the, ops is the answer. So, there's a, these are the main reasons why cloud accounting is beneficial to people. Okay, you can work with other members of your team remotely. You can access the information. So if you wake up in a cold sweat at two o'clock in the morning and you go, oh my God, has that person paid that bill? Or how much do I owe to this person that I have to pay? Or is there enough money in the bank account to pay wages? All of those sorts of things that as business owners go through your mind when you're thinking about other things and wake up in the morning. You can literally open up your phone or open up on an iPad or a laptop anytime you want and get access to the information. And it's completely up to date. So as soon as you have dealt with the transactions that have gone through your bank account in your accounting software, you, you can run the report straight away and see exactly what the financial position of your business is. You don't have to wait until the end of the year 
when you take all the stuff to your accountant and then wait another couple of weeks for them to get back to you to know where the financial position of your business is at. Now that's great if you're looking at wanting to go for a loan or you're looking at wanting to get a new vehicle or something like that. You don't again. You don't have to get your accountant to spend time getting that information together. It's there on the spot. You can look at it. You can see where you're at, and you can move on. Uh, the best part about the cloud accounting is the amount of automation that's involved. I'll get into that uh, in a little bit of time. But the automation and the things that you can get the software to do for you uh, means that the whole process of anything to do with the financial side of your business is a lot more efficient. I usually say to people, the one of the biggest benefits of cloud accounting uh, is that you can probably pretty much get the software to do about 80 to 85 percent of the work of the financial processing for you. So then you've only got that 20, 15 to 20 percent left that you have to physically do and that's what I refer to as gap processing. So you've only got to deal with the gap instead of having to do the whole lot. Now if it's not you, you might have a team member or you might have a bookkeeper or you might have an admin person, somebody else who does this side of things for you or it might be your partner if you're running your own business and your partner's doing the work for you. So imagine the relief for them if they can have software do 80% of that portion of the work and then the other side of that is that if they're saving all that amount of time, what else can they be doing? They could then be using that time to be following up on outstanding debts, to be looking at better systems and processes, to be looking at other things to improve the business or if it's just you then you can go back to that old saying of working on the business instead of in the business. I wrote an article for Zero uh, a number of months ago. Uh, I, I do a lot of blog articles and one of them that I wrote for them that they published internationally uh, and was actually picked up by a, a UK blog site as well was about how I, even as a bookkeeper having my own business, using the software as an accounting tool is one side of it but I actually find that I'm able to use it as a relationship tool with all of my contacts and my clients and now as my business is growing I can use it the same way with my team as well. So I can see where all of my business owners that I work with, where their business is at at any point in time or if they have a question they go, oh, I'm just not quite sure how I do this or where I'm at with that. I can log in literally while I'm on the road anywhere with a laptop, log in straight away to their data file and be talking about real live up to date information on the spot or if they're having a problem I can fix it then and there and then they can get on with what they're needing to do now that that's been fixed and that makes a massive difference to a person in business because if you're doing something right then and there and it's not working, that's when you need it fixed and that's what the benefit of being able to have your bookkeeper or your accountant accessing your data on the spot can really mean to you so that you can get on with the process of running your business and building your business. So it really is a relationship tool, it really is a collaboration tool. The other thing I put there with the clients and suppliers as well is that because of the invoicing system, like if you're using a cloud accounting system, be it my QuickBooks or, or Xero, there's a way that you can actually send invoices to your clients directly into their data file, so into their cloud accounting system. If you and them, they are using the exact, so if you're both using Maya, we're both using Zero, you can actually send it across and it will enter into their system automatically so it saves them processing time as well. Uh, same with suppliers, they can do the reverse and send it back to you and it can happen automatically. Now, what it does is it enters the information for you to review, for you to adjust if it needs to be adjusted, for you to allocate to cost centers or item codes or whatever you need to do and then you finalize it and you set payment dates and everything. So it again, it doesn't do 100% of the work for you. It's not taking control away from you. It's 
performing all of those routine, mundane, repetitive tasks, so the 80% for you to go in and do the 20%. And we all know about the 80-20 rule of business and that's, that's what we want to work on. So it really helps collaboration in every area. I haven't put on there as well, but it also helps with collaboration with the team as far as payroll is concerned, because if you have timesheets, uh, if you're trying to track what they're doing, there's projects that you can s assign tasks to different people and they spend an amount of time on it and the software will automatically calculate that and put it into their payroll. They get everything that you're doing paper-based, everything, there's so many things that we use Excel spreadsheets for that there are actually functionalities within cloud accounting software to do that for you. Uh, and can do it a lot more efficiently. Yes, there is some time to set up some of these things, but the amount of time it takes for you to do it, as opposed to the amount of time it takes for you to set it up and then have the system to do it, is a big, big difference. And this is something I've found over the last six years of working with this, is there's a process and a way to do it that makes it very, very simple. Further on from just the accounting process is also other ways of collaborating in the cloud, other ways of doing business in the cloud. I hear it all the time, look, this is just the way we do it here. We've always done it this way. Like, I know how to do it that way. I, I'm just comfortable with that. Why do I need to change? You don't need to change, but if you do want additional efficiencies in your business, then integrating a number of these tools will help you to do that. So Google Drive is awesome because you can, if you've got team out on the road uh, or you'll get receiving invoices and you've got receipts and you've got some people going to, I've got builders who'll go to Bunnings and because they're those heat printed receipts, they fade in like a week, especially when they put them in the glove box of the car or under the seat or on the dashboard or wherever else it is that they decide to hide them for three weeks until they get around, oh yeah, I spent that money. There's a functionality where you can take a photo of the receipt, upload it into Google Drive, it's there. The ATO requires that you have two copies of any source documents for any transaction that you want to claim either GST or as a tax deduction uh, in your book work. Both of those can be electronic. So if you upload a copy to, your Google, to a Google Drive, and then every transaction in your bank account, you can attach a copy of that receipt to that transaction. That's two copies. So then, and this is the big one that people go, really, are you sure? Can I actually do that? Yep, you can actually throw away the paper copy if you have two electronic copies of that invoice or that receipt, and a photo will suffice. So bye-bye paperwork. So that whole paperless office thing that seemed like a complete misnomer a few years ago, and we weren't quite sure how to do it, and there are still some things that you need by paper, but it, officially from the ATO, yes, if you use a, an electronic storage system, as well as having a copy attached in your accounting system of those receipts and of those documents, of the invoices, etc., you no longer need to keep copies of the paper receipts. The other thing is if you're out on the road and you're using this or you've got a number of people in your team, you can have every person that's involved in your team that's buying stuff in line with your internal procedures, taking photos, taking PDFs, putting those documents into the Google Drive and then either a person of your member of your team or you or your bookkeeper or accountant or their team member can then access that Google Drive and do those attachments for you as well. So there's not building up piles of paperwork and then sending it off or get someone to come into your office to process it. They can process that from anywhere they like as well. And you know, Zoom so or is just like GoToWebinar that we're on now. Um, me, when I'm communicating with people, like I have four email addresses, I have Facebook, I have Slack, I have LinkedIn, I have a number of different channels that people communicate with me regarding because it's about how do you want to communicate with me, not how I want you to communicate 
with me. So the collaboration tools uh, around that are really, really cool uh, and can save a lot of time. So you don't physically have to be in the same office anymore to do stuff. Slack you may not have heard of. Um, it's really popular in, not, uh, in co-working spaces. Um, and there's a lot more of those offices around these days. And it's a really cool tool to communicate with team members or other groups of people that you want to collaborate with. So like I said, it keeps you completely up to date if you're using cloud accounting software. And the way that that works is that every morning, every transaction that has gone through any of your bank accounts the previous day will automatically be sent by your bank to your software. So if you have, like I have a number of businesses where they might have three bank accounts, two credit cards, a loan, and a personal account as well. Right? Now, that would be a lot of work for somebody to sit there and physically key in and enter and create all of those transactions every single day. Not to mention the fact that you might have to wait for a bank statement to come in so you can only do that once a month or you have online access to your bank account and somebody has to physically go in there and create all that information, duplicate the information in the accounting system and it doesn't matter how amazing your admin, bookkeeping, finance person is or how amazing you are, there are times when we're all human, we could have an off day, we could miss something, we could overlook something, we could duplicate something, we could transpose numbers and make, you know, instead of $376, it's $637. That makes a little bit of a difference. Uh, so then your bank account isn't going to reconcile and you're like, ah, and then you've got to spend time finding out why and go back through all those transactions to figure it out, then adjust it or do a reversal and then it's complicated, it's time consuming, and with the way that the software works these days, it's not actually necessary anymore. So every day, if you've got multiple accounts or you've only got one, the bank will send the information to your software. Now the way that happens is that you sign a form permitting the bank to do that, permitting the bank to send the information through to the zero file. And like I said before, there's a very, very high level of security and encryption and protection against the data. You can't access the bank account the other way from within zero or mile or QuickBooks. So you can't just say, I want to pay this bill from within the software and it'll do whatever you want it to do in your bank account. That's part of the security. Right? It will send information, but it won't actually process any payments for you from the bank account. So the you as far as accessibility, say you've got a sales person in the sales team that you want that person just to be able to create invoices or just to be able to create quotes for you to review them and authorize them before they get sent out, or you want somebody to be on site that they can process it, they can do the invoice, they can email it across to the client while they're in front of them. And you know, if you're really, really clever and you have something like Square or Stripe or another payment um, gateway attached to your invoices, you can get the client to pay it while you're on site as well, that salesperson. You might want that person to only be able to access the feature of creating quotes and invoices. That's completely fine. You can restrict that person from accessing the bank statements and the purchases and the payroll and all those other parts that you as the business owner don't want them to access and they just get that bit. Similarly, then you might want people to be able to access only the area of your software where they can enter their timesheets so that the data is captured automatically and for you to then review it and process it without them seeing your bank accounts and be able to run reports and see the financial position of your business. Cloud accounting software provides you the functionality to do that as well. Now, remember I said about how the bank will send the transactions of the previous day into the software. Well, because a bank will always send them through in the same format, so every bank has a different format, but each bank has the same format that it uses for itself, 
you can set up what we call bank rules. So that every time you pay, like we're creatures of habit in business, let's be honest, if you have your phone system with Telstra or Optus or Vodafone or iinet or whomever it is or TPG or Dodo, you're, you're going to pay them every month for your phone. So instead of having to go, oh, hang on a minute, what was that payment to Telstra for? Well, 99.5% of the time the payment to Telstra is going to be a phone-related expense. So you set up a rule so that you tell the software, every time a transaction comes through and I've paid Telstra, allocate it across to phone expenses. Now there might be phone, there might be a portion of internet, there might be personal mobiles and business mobiles and it might be a really big bill. When I used to be a practice manager for an accounting firm that had over 70 staff and our phone bill, for some reason they used to send it posted to us, but our phone bill was over 30, was usually around 37 to 43 pages long. That was a month. So a lot of detail in there. We need to split that up. So you can set a rule that says this amount is always going to be base costs, this amount is always going to be for this personal phone, this amount's going to be for business phones, this amount's for internet. You can set those rules up as well. Uh, same for rent, if you want to split rent between different divisions of your business. Uh, if you want to pay electricity, that can be set up and if you run a business from home, you want, want to pay a portion of an expense that's business related and a portion of it is personal related. You can say 80% of it's work related, so every single month when that expense comes out of your bank account, your software will know, because you already told it, to put 80% of it to the profit and loss and 20% of it to the personal account. And you can adjust that if you need to. Nothing is set in stone. You can adjust it once the allocations have been made. You can review it. You can change it if you need to. It's about taking away the repetitive process of every single month going, where do I need to allocate that to? Saves an awful, awful lot of time. Um, like, I used to be in a position where I would be processing all of the book work. Because of cloud accounting software, I could process the entire amount of transactions for 35 businesses every single month completely by myself. So as one person, I could do all of the financial management for 35 businesses every single month. There is no way I would be doing that by pulling together all of the bank statements and all of the receipts and all of the invoices and doing everything manually. It's just not possible and it's just not feasible to do that and to be honest, I'd probably go nuts. So that's what I was saying before about getting the software to do 80% of the work for you. You can set up the rules however you like. The same with the reports. You can the benefit, the purpose of financial software is to be able to get information from the software on how your business is going. Now I know a, a, a number of people that don't actually want to know just how much money they're spending on certain things uh, and don't want other people to know just how much money they're spending on things as well. Uh, but it's an important thing to know. Uh, so you can find out within 30 seconds at any point in time you can run the report and it gives you that information whenever you need and all you need to do is process the invoicing, process the bank reconciliation, run the report. So I've been through a few of those points there with the payroll and super I know that there are ways of keeping old software and updating and getting third party updates for payroll tables, tax tables, uh, but to be honest there are a lot of changes happening when it comes to payroll these days. Uh, from July 1, 2018, there the ATO is introducing a process called One Click Payroll, which is literally 
you click it and it automatically processes it for you. And instead of reporting every month, every uh, sorry, instead of reporting every quarter on your business activity statement or your instalment activity statement, the information for payroll will go straight from your software to the ATO every single pay run. And if the ATO knows that you have payroll, they will expect to receive that information from you on every pay run. Now, like the ATO normally does, they're going to implement that for big businesses and then work down the chain to, to smaller businesses. But the software already has the capacity in there to do all of this for you. And you can export a file, send it across to the bank account, have the bank account pay the amounts as well. Super, uh, they're really, really, really crashing down on people who, uh, with the payment of Super. Uh, and they know whether or not payments have been made on time, etc. So having up-to-date online software that will take care of this for you, it's like a risk management tool for your business. Do you, how many things can you do to reduce the risk of the ATO coming down and knocking on your door and asking you to explain your internal business processes? How many things can you do to simplify that process so that it's, if they do come and ask the question, you go, yep, here it is, here's the information, not scarring you around with paperwork. The further benefit that you can get to, from cloud accounting software also comes to add-ons. So there are apps that other people have developed that are specific to different industries or can do specific tasks. So people who have service industries, so tradies that might have four or five different people on the road in different sites doing different jobs. There's a, an app called Service Mate, M and then the number eight on the end. And you can track exactly where everyone is, you can track all the jobs. If the head office gets in a phone call for a new job, you can allocate it to somebody and they just get a, advice on their phone and it goes out and they can take photos of the site when they turned up and then when it's done to show that it was clean and the job that was done and all those sorts of things and it feeds back into a central database and the information can go backwards and forwards and you can do invoicing and it's really simplifies things. You can attach documents for clients. You can do almost anything you want. If you've got a, a retail store, you can use something like Counter or Vend as the FPOS software on site and it will talk to your financial management system again so that you don't have to duplicate the process even if the system itself, so the software itself doesn't have the functionality that you specifically need. There might already be somebody out there who's developed another software that will link directly into the cloud accounting system to take care of that for you. So again, you can get rid of Excel spreadsheets you can get rid of access databases, you can simplify the process, and you can integrate all of your systems. There's, there are people who actually specialize in doing just that. So they will analyze your business, what you do, the level that you're at, how many staff you have, what industry you're in, what turnover you have, what you can afford, and then give you recommendations on the best, complete, overall, holistic, bunch of systems and software together for you to get even more efficiency out of your business so that you can have those staff members who were doing repetitive tasks in admin and finance and paperwork potentially doing something else. So everybody goes, oh, all those benefits, it must be so expensive or uh, is it must cost a lot and take a lot of time to move over. This is a breakdown that I've done basically of the different services and different options and different price points. So uh, as John said right at the start, you can all download a copy of these slides as a PDF. So you don't have to write all this stuff down. It's already on uh, the PDF. So you've got this as a reference point. These are up to date and current. Pricing options, uh, you'll see the little, the second and third lines there for $10 and $20 a month. You know, realistically, if your business is at the not at the point where you can afford to spend $240 a year, 
uh, on accounting software, eh, maybe you have a hobby. Um, how much is investing in your business and getting this time back worth? But think of it, if you can charge out at $80 an hour, $150 an hour for your time to do what you do, and you can get software to take care of a lot of this stuff for $120 a year, from $120 a year, that's like one hour of your time. So if you can get one hour of your time back for the entire year, it's paid for itself. When it comes up to the higher level business, think if you can save you or one of your staff you know, 20 hours a year, like an hour and a half a month in processing, it has paid for itself. And then you get the additional benefits that I spoke to you about before as well. So cost doesn't have to be a barrier. You can get so many other benefits to allow you to implement processes like this and grow your business and spend time doing more efficient, more effective things on your business. Uh, and you can see, yep, if you, so if you already have Myob and you're used to Myob in your business, it's okay to stay with that. If you have, like once you start getting five, six, seven employees in place, if you already have Myob, a lot of people say, oh, change to zero, change to zero. It's probably not cost effective to do that. The point is Myob does have online cloud versions of software as well so that you can stick with what you're familiar with, what you know, and just get additional efficiencies and benefits out of transitioning to the more up-to-date version of that software. If you're just starting out, Zero has a better price point for what you're probably going to need. and it has the ability to grow with you as you add invoicing, as you add employees, as you increase your employees. Um, whereas Myob, you basically pay for the full package whether you use it or not. QBO at the top, so that's QuickBooks. Um, it does offer all of those things for a rather low price. <laughs> the caveat that I would put on that, look, there are They've been around for a while. They are a decent company. I have found over the last six years that QuickBooks is a very good option for people in business who are very good at bookkeeping, have a person on staff who is really, really good at that process, or that they outsource it to an accountant or a bookkeeper to take care of for them because there are some eccentricities of QBO uh, and some limitations on some of the processing, which probably, which can take longer to reverse and redo if it's done wrong than it does using the other options. And by the time you do that, the amount of time that you spend for a bookkeeper or an accountant to fix those things up could move it up to the same price point as using the other ones. And I'm just gonna leave it with there, but that you've got all of those there as options. That's the, the benefits and the drawbacks of each of the different options. Uh, and that's pretty much the extent of what I wanted to say, um, other than you know, by getting all the efficiencies through using cloud accounting software, you relieve a lot of stress. You relieve a lot of anxiety. You've got access to it all the time when you want it. One thing that I'm very, very big on is mental health. So I actually, so this is a photo of me, I actually was part of a national campaign that was conducted by Beyond Blue, the National Mental Health uh, Awareness Organization, uh, for business owners with mental health issues uh, to support them. So anything that we can do to reduce the amount of stress and anxiety uh, and feeling of overwhelm uh, from running a business because there's a lot of things we have to deal with is a good thing and by having automation, systemization and efficiency through something as basic and as fundamental as the accounting package to take care of all of your finances, the better. So just putting that out there as well for something to be aware of and that's pretty much the end of my presentation. So all I want to say is bookkeeping doesn't have to be 
your thing. Uh, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be expensive. It just has to be done. And if you get this right and get it sorted out and get it as efficient as possible, you can concentrate on what you do well and that will mean that you'll be able to go ahead and share your awesomeness with the rest of the world and uh, leave the computer to deal with the finances. So that's me. So I'm just going to invite John to jump back on with me. Right here for you, Troy. Hey, there we go. All right, so we're going to open up for some Q&A and um, any yeah, questions that people have and what the, they might be looking for. Yep, absolutely. So thank you again, Troy, for your presentation today. Um, yeah, improving the digital awareness and capability around uh, bookkeeping and finances and just accounting in general is vital to remain competitive. So your insights have really provided some really valuable content today. Uh, we do have some questions initially, but if anyone has some questions, please feel free to type them in and I'll be fielding those. But we'll start off with um, one here from Jeff. Um, how do I avoid overlap with my cloud programs? What was that? Sorry, John. Sorry, right. uh, how do I avoid overlap with my cloud programs? Okay, so I'm not quite sure what overlap with cloud programs means, uh, but basically what you, if you're already using some sort of cloud system, so be it your email system, be it Google Drive, be it um, other programs that you might have, there's usually a way to integrate what you currently have with a cloud-based accounting system. That's so there's this thing called an open API, which is technology speak for a computer programmer can develop a system where this program and another program can talk to each other and share information so that you're not duplicating that process. Um, if you have Google Drive, for instance, you can, or everyone's got emails is really understandable for as far as cloud is concerned. So you can have an email inbox for all of your invoices to come into and all of your receipts to come into. And there's a specific code in your software that picks those up and automatically it will actually scan the contents of those receipts and those invoices and create the document for you to review in the software if you once it's all set up. So there's always ways to integrate multiple systems. Um, another follow-up here from Send. Um, she says, my internet isn't great. As a regional business, how do I utilize the cloud? So, it, yeah, internet in regional areas isn't great yet. Um, however, if you if you can use Google or you use Gmail uh, to access your emails, then Xero uh, or QBO will work for you on the internet. The amount of data that it actually pulls down is very, very, very low comparatively to other, because it doesn't have photos, it doesn't have videos, it doesn't have all these high resolution issues uh, like things in it that cause issues with downloads and, and speed. My OBS desktop version that's connected to the cloud, uh, you can do all of, you can import the bank feeds, so that's the only part that you have to do online, and then do the rest of it using the processing speed of your computer or your system and your server and your network that you have, so that might be an option for you if you're, um, if it's really, really really bad uh, access to the internet. But yeah, it doesn't take up a lot of bandwidth. It really, really doesn't. And you know, you if you need to, you can just download the bank transactions and then deal with it from there. But there, yeah, there are other options. Um, Tracy would like to ask, um, I intend to have a micro business of just me providing a low expense consulting service 
Should I set up a business account and use the bank app then use a different app for invoicing? Okay, so yep, that is a really, really good point. Uh, is to even if you do have a micro business, uh, you want to have a separate bank account that's only business related and remove all of your personal items. A lot of people, like I said, that I work with the startup space, they go, oh, I've got one bank account. I'll just use that, and the money will go in, and then I'll just spend everything out of it. You know, going to Woolies and buying my shoes, and putting fuel in the car, and you know, weekends away or whatever in the cafe. Uh, have a separate bank account. If you, to very, just really starting off, if you're not going to go over the seventy-five thousand dollar a year income threshold where you need to register for GST, that's where the ten dollar a month zero file will link. You link your bank account to the zero file. It'll take care of all of those transactions. Now, if you're only sending a few invoices a month for relatively low amounts. Um, don't shoot me for this, but to start out with, you could set up like a, a Word or Excel invoicing template, print that to PDF to send to people, and then they make the payment into your bank account, and then the software will pick up the deposit when they make the payment and you record it as income at that stage, and that's a way to be able to utilize this the computerized cloud accounting software without having to go to the additional expense of using invoicing just when you're starting out. When you get to a point where your invoice numbers or values are increasing, uh, so if you do four invoices a month, right, effectively each invoice is going to cost you $10 to send out by having invoicing on cloud accounting software. Eh, we probably don't like that. Once you start sending 8, 10, 15, 20 invoices, or if those invoices are a couple of thousand dollars each, then yeah, it's justifiable to keep track of it by spending that additional money. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you, it, it is a pretty common question that I get asked, so that's, and that's usually the way I answer it. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Tracy follows up with, I've used invoice to go to send out. Um, yeah, look, if you've got it, uh, then use it, but like you're paying for invoice to go. Um, you could be just paying for zero and it will take care of a lot of other stuff that invoice to go doesn't pay for. Um, or you can actually integrate invoice to go with zero. But to do that, you'd have to have the invoicing function available within Zero, and to do that would be forty dollars, and you could just use Zero for invoicing instead of paying for that, as well as invoice to go as well. Um, there is the ability to integrate it with QuickBooks as well, but like I said before, there are some limitations around that. Um, but look, I there are. A lot of people within the bookkeeping and accounting industry now are getting really familiar with how to integrate all these different systems and processes together. So definitely, you know, have a chat with a bookkeeper or an accountant, and they will be able to work with you specifically on your requirements to get the best system working for you. Champion. Um, I know you touched on this in the beginning of your talk, Troy, but um, just coming back, uh, should I rely on the cloud software security or should I begin investing in online security to protect my uh, cloud transactions? So I would say both. Now, the reason for that is, like I said before, they do have very high level of security within them themselves being the software providers and what they're required to have on board as part of their the regulations within the country around financial data security. However, as a risk management tool for your business in general, it's always advisable if you're doing anything on the internet that you have some form of security system in place for you and your business personally as well. Makes sense. Uh, being, a, yeah, being a bookkeeper and an accountant, um, certainly wouldn't be able to give any more information than that. Uh, really not my area of expertise. 
but yeah, def definitely having having something in place because it's you probably find with your professional indemnity insurances or any of your other risk assessments um, that you know it's always a good idea to have something in place that you control as well as having something else that someone else takes care of. Makes perfect sense. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we'll have to end it there. Thank you everyone for attending the webinar. Please remember to download the handouts before you exit. This webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Impact Innovation Group YouTube page should you wish to view it again. Uh, you will receive an email with information about the Office of Small Business Programs along with a short survey that will help us tailor these webinars to meet your interests and needs. Thank you so much, Troy, for donating your time and giving us your insights into cloud computing and cloud accounting. It really has been insightful. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and have a great day.